What a beautiful market because it's massive. Mm. It's pretty recession proof. It, uh, it proved to be fairly COVID proof. I mean, people, even in March when everything was just going end of the world, people still bought books on weight loss. So. Welcome to Seven Figure Entrepreneur, the number one podcast bringing you behind the scenes with real online earners. No fake gurus here. And today we have another Canadian in the mix, uh, Brad Pilon. What's going on, Gabe? What's happening, man? Glad you're here. This is a uh, yeah. We got connected by Liz. Liz was a great one, man. She had a uh, she had quite the insight into some some email drops. You would be the most connected person in the industry, I think. Yeah, it's it's funny because someone's someone suggested to her just because of that, and I was like, yeah, sure, like I'm open. I have no idea. Like, let's let's just try it out. And she was great, man. And like, yeah, she must she handles a lot of volume when it comes to email. Oh, yeah, and she's no nonsense. She knows what she's doing. She she reminds me a bit of Elon Musk. You just really hope she never goes evil because she's <laughs> all over everything. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, does she she has does she email your stuff? Oh yeah, so I. She runs the majority of that side of stuff to the point where I'm not sure I know how to do it anymore, right? Because she just, email was the one thing that was super hard for me to let go. Right? Yeah. Because me talking to people who bought my book. And back in the day, that was like me talking to 10, 15 people. So it was like a super personal connection. So yeah. for her to pry them out of my like ninja kung fu grip took a lot of effort. But she finally was like, dude, like I'm sending your content. It's still you. I'm just pressing the button. So like, I'm fine. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing, man. Uh, I think we're letting Tyler in the room right now. I think this is happening. There's oh. one more. Oh, late to the party, but here nonetheless. Hey, yeah. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. So, the whole plan to talk smack about Tyler just fell apart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And now we got three Canadians going. This is this is cool, Beautiful. man. Let's do it. Best day ever. Best yeah. day I ever. I smacked about you last week, so it works out. I get my fair share. <laughs> yeah, whatever. You know, it's good. It's yeah. good. I, I totally okay. accept it. Uh, so yeah, we already, we've done an intro. We're recording. Just shit is going. Um, yeah, let's go. Welcome to the party. Uh, yeah. Look at Brad's gym setup. Look at that rack in the back. I was wow. like, man. It's going to give you a little, wah, little preview. Man, dude, I'm jealous. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I said too. He was set during COVID. We got the little plates on there though. <laughs> I know, right? You know, I was just the I was I was saying to Gabe that my old house was a townhouse, and my office was basically a five foot by five, five foot roughed in bathroom in the basement, and you can't get any work done in your own house in a cubicle, right? So when yeah. we moved, I was like, I get a third of the basement, like I get one third. I want office gym connected, and that was the deal, and I got it. So I got my little man cave going. You even on. got some built-in bookshelves in there. I mean, you're oh, yeah. sad, man. Yeah, you just IKEA a little trimmer on it, and you look like a pro, right? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, so you're you're quite the like health genius, aren't you? Yeah, but, I'm, I'm observant. I like to say I like to look at different things and look for connections and people. Yeah, look pretty. yeah. I, I read a little bit of your bio here. Um, and so, like, before we dig into what you do and everything like that, let's just kind of start to uh, how you got here and what you did before this. Oh, I've always been in health and fitness to some degree. So it's been like a, an obsession. I'm going all the way back to uh, Lou Frignall, Incredible Hulk on TV. Yes. David Banner, not Bruce Banner, right? Yeah. That got me into it, uh, for, but I wasn't athletic at all. Can't catch a ball and save my life. So if you can't play sports, you go to the gym, right? Yeah. So gym rat, worked at uh, a local supplement shop. From there, went to University of Guelph for nutrition. Uh, from there, left school um, and started working in the supplement industry. Uh, minor, small, small company in Canada called Mustech that exploded into just a fantastic, massive company. Um, and then about six, seven years into that, I left to go back to grad school. Grad school ended up being on intermittent fasting, took my grad thesis, turned into a book, and that's how I got here. That's, that's super cool. Tyler, I think your mic's not on, my friend. I can see your mouth moving. Is it oh, no. Yeah, you're good. You're good. <laughs> Dude, I've heard of Muscle Tech. That was a big brand. Is it still it around? Yeah, it was a really cool company. When I started, there was like 25 people there. So you got to wear sort of a lot of hats, is what we like to mm. say. Right? Startup mode. Yeah. And then the thing is, the guy who, uh, who ran that company just knew, he knew ad copy on a level that our industry is just catching up to. Just brilliant. Interesting. So, Wow. Yeah, it was really cool to watch him grow that into just a massive, massive company. I left before it kind of made that giant leap, but uh, it was it was a cool spot full of 
young bodybuilding fitness guys and girls. So good culture. Yeah, that, super cool, man. That ad copy skill, man, is like a number one thing. I wish I, I wish I had that to this day. Like, oh, I'm, I'm yeah. okay, and I can mash some shit together. But like, really coming up with new, new angles, that's like a gift. Yeah. yeah. What you got to do is you can never write ad copy for your own babies, right? So if you wrote the book or the program, and it's like it's a like part of you. Yeah. You can't write that copy. Someone else. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. You can't. But you could write someone else's copy. If you gave me your book, I could read it and be like, Gabe's brilliant. This is what I'm going to say. But yeah. especially being, I think it's a Canadian thing, being the writer, you yeah. know, my copy was basically like, hey, I've got a book and I think, I think you might like it. So if you want to like check it out, it'd be super cool. So here's it for free. And if you like it, maybe send me a couple bucks. That By was the way, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> you don't like sorry. I mean to bug you. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's too funny, man. Yeah. I guess. Cause I you don't want to glow too much. I don't know. No, right? And it's, there is yeah. a Canadian way, man. There is. There yeah. definitely is. Like, I was talking with my mail team the other day about this because we have people in Egypt and the Philippines and U.S. and Canada. And uh, I think it was Raph. He was saying, so maybe we should try this. And I started laughing. I'm like, maybe we should try this means we should actually fucking do this. Yeah. <laughs> but as Canadians, we say, maybe we should, like, as opposed yeah. to being super direct. Oh, yeah. And that was actually Canadian super directness. Like, maybe, guys, if you don't mind, I think I, I really want to push for us to try this, maybe. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. True. But if you're not down, yeah. like, we can, we can pass on it. And... Yeah. Don't, don't, we can do something <laughs> else. It's fine. I'll, I'll just be sad care. on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> Man, intermittent fasting. I want to ask you about that because you brought yeah. it up. I, yeah. I, yeah. Is that I was, something? I was are you a fan? Shit. Yeah. So that was my, my grad work was intermittent fasting, which got turned into the book Eat, Stop, Eat. And like when I first launched that online, that was on the uh, advice of Craig Valentine, buddy of mine. He was like, just sell oh, it online. I've heard of Craig. He was yeah. like, five books online, but I did it anyways. And uh, it started Amazon, off. I don't know. Yeah. 70 pages, font 12, double spaced, right? But yeah. the cool thing yeah. about online is that people will email you back and be like, did chapter four make no sense? So the crap, I got to expand that. I got to make it make sense. And then. That's you cool. know, they would slowly through kind of that um, crowdsourced editing and end up being you know, a good 250 page book of, of intermittent fasting info. So mm-hmm. how long ago was this? Oh, God, 2006. Uh, it was written and it was first put up on ClickBank like December 2006. Wow, that's that's pretty OG, man, because I feel oh. like I feel like we probably started hearing about it more so about four years ago, maybe oh, yeah, but 10 yeah. years old. Yeah. Yeah. There was like, <laughs> I think there was a Joe Rogan podcast with uh, Dr. Rhonda Patrick and she really dug deep into it and same yeah. with, uh, oh man, I forget his name, but he's huge on it. Huge yeah. on Dr. It. Michael Mosley wrote a book called the five, two diet it was very similar. You stop eat. And that was in 2000, I want to say 12. And that yeah. was a big push for mm-hmm. me when you yeah. kind of brought it a bit more mainstream than I could. Nice. It's, it's crazy, man. Like from what I know about it, like book, it can help uh, you like, gone out there. What'd you say, Chad? Well, I was wondering how many copies of your book you sold. Oh, yeah. Or you've given away and maybe someone. (laughs) I was trying to figure that out, right? So if if you're counting books you sold as a PDF, which is still a book, just not in paper form, it's got to be well over half a million, right? And the cool thing about self-publishing is when you publish, you know, through a publisher and they get you into Barnes & Noble or whatever, and you're face forward on eye level but you're only there for a couple of weeks and then their next person is there and you're put down to the bottom right but yeah. online as long as you're willing to blatantly self-promote yourself you can do yeah. it for a decade and a half and make money mm-hmm. on it. so yeah, yeah probably about five hundred thousand copies i would say including the pdf and all that sort of thing wow gotcha that's amazing um cool. kind of step back a little bit was craig ballantyne a huge help because i had considered hiring him for coaching yeah, Craig is uh, super direct, yeah, um, super laser robot focused with a wicked cool dry sense of humor that you can miss, right? Yeah. Craig is the type of guy that if you don't know where you want to go, so if you're in business, but you're sitting there going like, I want a mansion and this, and then Craig's like, no, what do you actually, what do you want, right? Yeah. What, what are you doing? And then working you back on how to get there, he's really good for that. So yeah. in terms of focusing you in, you know, he, I, I don't think he's going to design your product or do your funnels. I don't think he does that kind of anything anymore. But if you're looking to sort of develop some sort of legacy level wealth in terms of doing what you do, but in a way you want to do it, uh, yeah. Yeah, he'd be a guy. Looking That's for cool. Him. That's yeah. cool, man. I, def- I definitely need like the kind of guy that tells me I'm a fucking idiot. And does he's just out in Van City now, I think. Yeah, he is. He is. Yeah, he's local. 
Yeah, you can meet him for a coffee at four ten in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Pass. Yeah. Pass. G- Gabe's checking ads at four ten. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then as long as nothing's like burning down, I just close the laptop and then go right back, back to, to that. sleep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The world's uh, fine. Touching on intermittent fasting, is that something yes. you still believe in today? Yeah, I, I actually finished my fast two hours ago. I'm, I'm once or twice a week for 24 hours. That's the way wow. the top eat was set a up. Week? Yeah, and it's, uh, I've been doing that since oh, 2006, so 14 years. Of- and you haven't killed anybody? No, well, I, not that anybody can prove, but yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, it's worked famously for me just in terms of keeping myself where I want to be, right? Like I don't have mm-hmm. uh, 220 pound bodybuilder ambitions. I kind of yeah. have that sort of, I just want to be the fittest out of the pool. That's really all that matters, right? Fair so, enough, yeah. It allows me to do that where on the days I'm not fasting, I'm eating like everyone else, right? Yeah. So yeah. there's brownies, I'm eating brownies, donuts, beer, I'm there. Yeah. Right? But just once, twice a week, there's one night twice a week where I'm probably not drinking. Right, because I'm fasting. But other than that, you know, if, if you want to get together tomorrow, I'm in. Right. Yeah. So very cool. Once or twice. Yeah, from a life, lifestyle point of view, it's very sustainable, right? Yeah, because let's say I'm like I'm, I'm fasting right now, and I, I want to fast tonight or tomorrow. But you guys are like, we're actually in town. Let's grab a beer. So I can just. I'm not going to fast now. I'll fast tomorrow. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. There's a bit more flexibility where any diet program that needs you to follow some sort of regimen every day. Yeah. It's tedious, man. Like it, it, that's hard. So I like yeah. to kind of ram it in the two days a week and just take yeah. the rest off and eat normal. Do you do a uh, straight w- straight water fast on those twenty four hours, or is it dr- uh, well, like coffee as water well? and espresso? Yeah, I yeah, mean, okay. two espresso every morning, <laughs> faster yeah. not kind of guy, and then it's water after that. Yeah, cool, cool, interesting. Yeah. yeah, I've been like so I've done the like intermittent stuff, but I've never gone full twenty four. I'm kind of a pussy. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Once you get past that 16 hour mark, it just sort of flows, right? Yeah. And you might get hungry around 20, 21, and you're like, I have three hours to go. Yeah. So, do you not know work out on those days? Yeah, um, my workout routine is pretty much every other day. So sometimes it falls on, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. And if it does, so let's say I'm done fasting at two, yeah, I'll just put off working out until 2.30. Nice. Gotcha. Uh, how does that reflect your clarity? Uh, I'm a pretty muddled guy to begin with, <laughs> so no, it's good. <laughs> I get a lot of work done um, in those mornings. The mornings where I just get up, make coffee, come down here and get writing are probably my better days. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Uh, yeah, I focus my, not necessarily editing, but when I'm actually creating, I focus those days on my fasting days. So the non-fasting mm-hmm. days, I can edit and do email and run numbers and stuff like that. But Yeah, that's very, very cool. cool, man. Yeah. I guess I we should, it. yeah, I like it too. I feel like it's, it's definitely something that's been in the back of my mind. Like even just doing like one 24 a week. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then you know, you can do it right. Once you've done one, it's got a positive reinforcement of that. Yeah, I can do this again. Right. So, yeah. There's just so, there's just so many benefits. Like it, it's kind of stupid not to. Yeah. Dave, you're ripped already, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm the opposite of ripped. I look like a, <laughs> I look like a f- fresh potato out of the ground. Uh, <laughs> you got you got the new haircut too by the way i wanted to point that out dude yeah i went back to the old school stuff i just like I you're like all, a whole new man these days i felt like i needed to look like a man again instead of like a teenage child oh uh, then you get the covid flow going for a bit there and then well i just i had it like it was more like forward and stuff and i and yeah. i just went back to the part so yeah what was it pinky black when you look doesn't really work anymore it's like (laughs) yeah yeah i guess it was kind of like peaky blinders style (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. that's a good look though (laughs) it it is if you got like a crazy like skin fade and you're jacked and yelling at people in like a terrible english accent yeah it's going on that guy's the crazy side dude i love that show though that show is fucking awesome Yeah. yeah, so good. <laughs> um, so we should probably dive into what you do now. We haven't really like touched on it. So oh, much. like business wise. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> we got a bit of it with your book, and you're like, yeah. Yeah, hey, he owns McDonald's. It's fine. We've gone over it. Yeah, yeah I hear exactly. those things are shutting down the the franchise. Is- yeah, no. Um, so what I realized kind of early in this game is I don't really want that massive empire right i don't need an mm. 18 floor building with pylon on it on pylon crescent you know with fountains in it right? i just want that um freedom to do what i want when i want kind of an untroubled mm-hmm. life sort of thing gotcha. so i view my company as a publishing company and that's that's how i treat it so more than we are a marketing or advertising company which is 
kind of a necessity in any company. So every company totally. is marketing the advertising. But what we do best is, is publish books. And so if you keep that focus, um, then you're able to remember to work on the stuff that matters. Because everybody in our industry has these bright ideas that when you look around and see what everybody's doing, you're like, oh, I want to try that and that. And then yeah. you just sit there at your desk, just 18 papers of ideas going on. You're like, I have no idea where to go, right? So mm -hmm. the focus on publishing, focus on just getting the book out to as many people as possible. And that's sort of the driving factor of the business. And then we drive them into email. We try to communicate well with them in email. So the rule with email is write an email you'd want to read, right? So make sure it's content heavy. And then honestly, I love the way you put that, man. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> seriously. Like uh, so many people, like they don't know what to put together. It's like, write something that you would actually want to read because yeah, other people because are actually spending their time reading, reading it. Yeah. Exactly. So, even Esau B, being perfectly honest, I wrote that for me, right? I was doing my grad work on intermittent fasting because it was something that's interesting to me. Mm -hmm. So if you remember that these people share at least that one interest with you, then talk to them like that, right? Let them know. So uh, write the way you would want to be written to. And then on the email, you, you know you have to market and you have to advertise in our industry, right? So mm -hmm. the key is market and advertise a way that wouldn't make you angry. So we get to the point where on the content emails, I do content, we do a line, like sorry, sign off. You know, your friend, Brad, eastopbeat.com, blah, 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 line, and then whatever ad is going on underneath. And you're still, you're never gonna make everybody happy. Yeah. It's a really fair trade, right? We still get people who see that ad and like, that's oh, crazy interesting, I'm gonna click it. You know, people who aren't interested in it aren't gonna click it. And then every once in a while, you get someone who blasts you for sending the ad, but they're always gonna be that people. But so if you, mm -hmm. if you look at that, that email, imagine you sent it to you, be like, okay, what I, I just gave you eight paragraphs of really cool info, a line and a commercial at the end. Yeah, I'm fine with that. So yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's sort of the, so the, it's a business of words for us, right? It's, it's books in the email and then it's just keeping it interesting and you can go off on tangents with these people, but just got to remember to bring it back to fasting or weight loss at some point. Gotcha. gotcha. And what a beautiful market because it's massive. Mm. It's pretty recession proof. It, uh, it proved to be fairly COVID proof. I mean, people, even in March when everything was just going end of the world, people still bought books on weight loss. So yeah, dude, yeah. I actually love that you brought that up, man. Uh, we did a podcast episode, Gabe and I last week where we touched a lot about uh, COVID and how online businesses like when COVID started to happen, we do. So we do a lot of lead generation. Yeah, um, I, I was unsure how that was going to go because now call centers were shutting down or yep. you know, all these things were happening, but um, to their benefit, they adapted. People yeah. working from home, they found an increase in productivity, yep. um, ad costs dropped, which was great. Yep. So many businesses, so many all His internet does this from time to time. Uh, it was it was <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's definitely his internet. We call those the Tyler Devin magic moments. Yes. Uh, uh, right when you say it, it, it only happens when you say something very important and it's not the internet it's actually Tyler getting stuck in thought right like, <laughs> I should start doing that man that'd be hilarious that would be um, so good. but uh but yeah as a whole internet businesses flourished during COVID yeah and There's it was other a lot opportunities of, out there yeah people pivoting into internet I think that yeah. uh, COVID did I mean it got a silver lining everything right so it moved more people into a comfort level of ordering stuff online. Yeah. Okay. Uh, bit of a pain in the ass because they were used to sort of that Amazon Prime idea of like, hey, I, I ordered your book off of Facebook an hour ago and it's not here yet. What are you doing? I'm like, I, well, are you, I'm not Amazon, man. I'm like, it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> Apologize for not being Jeff Bezos, but yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, it made, it, made, mm -hmm. um, it made you also very quickly think, hey, it's March. Canada's like basically shut down. I'm watching sales, but we have to have a, we have a team call every Monday. We gotta have a talk, like if we need to pivot, what's it gonna look like? Like yeah, what I mean, do we have to do here to, to keep this going? And what, what's the core of the business? If you're just tightening up, just to kind of straight shoot through this, mm -hmm. what's the core you keep and what are things you're gonna cut off for a while? So that was a great talk to have because it reaffirms the actual focus of the company. Yeah, no doubt. That's awesome. I feel like so, it makes sense that weight loss was good during that time because I feel like everyone just like sat at home, drank, and ate. Yeah, that's why <laughs> for three weeks, that's all I did. It, yeah, yeah. Why not? 
The world's yeah, coming. Exactly. The world's coming to an end. You know, know why? Why not? Because the first week you look in the mirror and nothing changed, and then by week two you're like, ah. and week three you're like, oh Jesus, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yes. Yeah. I, Happens I, fast. Oh yeah. Yeah. Was your was the weather good there when COVID hit, or was it shit? Crap. Yeah. Oh so, okay. That made it worse. You're stuck in your house. You don't really want to go outside because it's cold. But at the same time, then you're really stuck in your house, right? So we were like bundling up with the kids to go for walks. You're doing like three or four walks a day just to kind of get out. Yeah. And Where are you? Uh, sure. Just outside of about 20 minutes outside of Hamilton, an hour and a half outside of Toronto. Gotcha. Yeah. Far, it, it's farm country, but, you know, I got a 12-minute drive to Starbucks. I just have to drive by cows to get to it. Nice. Gotcha. <laughs> so it, I started training with the kids outside. They're like 11 or 13, so they can kind of hang out with me. And then yeah. we would just bundle out and pull sleds back and forth in the backyard like idiots, right? Just to get out and do something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. That's cool. We, we, Very cool. we lucked out here. It was like nonstop sun and like 20 degrees some oh, of the yeah. days. It was good. Yeah. But going cool. back uh, to, to your business and what you do. So essentially you sell books, either PD. Yeah, and then you had hard copies as well that you did. Yeah, hard copies now too. Yep. Um, and then do the hard copies. So, and all that's to funnel everyone to an email list. Yeah, yeah. I really the hard copies funnel the email list as well. Yeah, you'd be surprised. They will find you. Um, yeah. They'll email in. Um, they will. I mean, on the back of the book is bradpeelan.com. You know, and even with the hard copy, they still have to make that transaction. So I get their mm -hmm. email right. And then nice. Email yeah. um, and then you just start that off with a conversation and you really want to get them in to, to that flow of actually in a world of unbelievable amount of email, you kind of want them to look forward to yours or at least occasionally open it, not because you had an awesome headline, just because of who said it. As long as yeah. you can keep that going, it's a bit forgiving when you have horrible headlines every once in a while, right? So yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. That's but cool. That's really cool. Email still drives it and it's, it's, changed my demographic email is getting older and older i would say that they're you know skewing 50 plus now in terms mm -hmm. of who actually uses email to communicate yeah i can see that um, but th that age group is also ones who will sit and actually read an email yeah so, mm -hmm. and they have disposable income too yeah facebook exactly. demos like that getting that much older as well I think. oh yeah there's no one young on facebook no. i really feel like <laughs> past no. about 40 and down Right, you might have an account, but you don't use it, right? So, yeah, yeah. And if you have an account that you don't use, please send it my way so I can use yeah, it yeah. advertising. Uh, <laughs> I pay a hundred dollars a month. There you go. <laughs> yeah, and then I don't. Um, I'm not sort of Greg O'Gallagher comfortable on Instagram and stuff like that, so I don't do. Mm, yeah, and then that I guy's do, a maniac. Oh, he's awesome. In yeah. a in a good way, he's yeah. a maniac yeah. though. Like yeah. his his content is so catchy. Oh, I can't catch you. And you know what? It, he got a lot of shit when he started out. Um, just, you know, he was copying people and, and whatnot. And how do you copy in this industry, right? Like if you have a great workout and I try the workout and I'm like, that's a good workout. And I write about the workout. Chances are you got it from someone else who got it from Arthur Saxon way long time ago, right? So yeah, yeah. But what you got to respect about Greg is his messaging and image has stayed on point since he started. And he's what, yeah. 27 now. And to, to stay true to who you are from online at 20 until 27, that's a bit of a gift, right? Because most people- Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you find other people on Instagram and you watch them from one month, they're carnivore and they're vegan and then they're- <laughs> Yeah. And, they're subsurf, and then they're body weight and they're powerlifting, they're bodybuilding, whereas Greg just being the same thing. And I think people appreciate that kind of messaging, but- I agree. I, do that on Instagram. I, I think I don't have the same uh, face profile as him both left and right. So, <laughs> It's but hard. Guess, it's hard doing that shit, man. Like it's tough yeah. being consistent on camera and just you know getting that energy up. Um, and some people have it, so you got to know your medium, right? I can do a little yeah, bit Twitter. Yeah. I can be clever occasionally in 140 characters, but yeah. normally I need a lot more to explain myself. So email's my bag. Yeah, no, it makes sense, man. Greg did a good job with his YouTube video, his whole like Batman thing. Oh yeah, and I really started noticing him, man. I yeah. have no idea and, who the guy who you guys are. Talking oh, about. Dude, you like, dude, you gotta look at Greg O'Gallagher. Okay, I'm I'm looking right now. Yeah, so you've got Craig Valentine, you got Greg O'Gallagher. We're gonna have you a whole list of you, and these are people you should have on the show too, by the way. Greg, would absolutely talk? hook me up. Okay, you know what's cool about Greg too, man, is how transparent he is because he, you know, he had the Lambo and the house, and then he's like, "This was all my dad. My dad built all this shit." Oh, I know this guy. 
Yeah, yeah of course you do, bro. Yeah. Everybody you look just him. like him. Yeah, and you know, he took all the slack for daddy's money and stuff like that. And uh, oh, yeah. I thought it was really funny. He took the most slack for daddy's money when he launched that real Bruce Wayne video. And it was like, do you guys, you don't read comment, comments, do you? Like, you, how you're making fun of someone for comparing himself to Bruce Wayne when all he has is dad's money. And like, that's, that's all Batman has daddy's money. Right? It's, yeah. <laughs> but he made his own little empire. He right? did, man. You can tell he's doing well. I give him props for that too, because most rich kids don't really, and that's like a blanket statement. But a majority of rich kids oh, don't yeah. really. He works way harder. Hustle, than I yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Greg's a grinder, bro. Every time I see him too, he looks leaner and leaner. I'm like, dude, there's no body fat left. Yeah, you you could probably have a donut. And yeah, I think he eats fairly liberally. He just when you're on screen all the time, and that on screen presence is generating you seven figures, the incentive is pretty good to be like, ah, maybe I'll do five more minutes of cardio or lift a bit more weight or maybe not eat the second brownie, right? Like it's yeah, yeah, yeah. a good way to keep Fuck something. It, I'm having three. Yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> so, so getting back to your business. So you sell the books, you build up the email list. Yep. Let's talk about email. How many subscribers do you currently have in your total database and how many do you actually mail? There's about uh, I would go 150 with some overlap, right? There's a lot of lists that are managed and people flip and flop between lists. So there's a bit of overlap there. And then we mail almost daily, depending on the list you're on. We flow you through a customer list. And yeah. that's where I'm hitting you. You just bought, it's you and me talking. And as we're talking, I'll let you know. So, you know, you've been fasting. You're probably, you might be a bit concerned about how much protein you're eating, right? It's hard to eat as much protein as you want while you're fasting. Um, so then I give them some info and let them know, by the way, I do have a book on how much protein I think you should eat. Smart. So if you want to grab that, go here. And let's say you buy that book. Yeah, you're back on the customer list. Just, I, I keep you going. Mm -hmm. So yeah. as long as you're a customer and you're engaged in your open emails, you stay with me. Let's yeah. say you're on the customer list, you open three of my emails and you're like, this, this guy's old, he's a dad, he's boring, right? And so you don't, you don't yeah. keep open them. Or, I've, and you've, or you've opened and you've seen all the books I have to offer and you're like, this, this isn't for me, man. Like your, your fasting book was okay. I don't want to read about protein from you, et cetera. And eventually you'll move off of that list and onto a list that's a bit more other offer heavy because- the way I like to think of it is that, you know, you're not interested in me, but have you met my friend Gabe? Right. Yeah. So you, you have no remorse of introducing them to other people who have different messaging than you if they weren't interested in your message. Mm -hmm. so I like that, that. That's smart. Yeah. And then that's just kind of, they flow through that. And if I happen to re-engage them in that with something I, that they're like, you know what? I didn't dig you before, but now I'm kind of seeing where you're coming from and you buy something from me, you're back on the customer list and it's more me and you one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I just flow them that way. As, as long as they've bought in or been responding to emails, et cetera, they know they're engaged and they're interested in what I have to say. But yeah. I don't want to keep you on a list you don't want to be part of. So you, you're not unsubscribing, so you're still interested in health and fitness, but you're just not picking up what I'm putting down. I'm going to pass you on and let you know some other people and see if you like what they're saying, right? So that's how I manage it. Cool. That's really cool. In comparison to like front end rev versus uh, back end revenue with email, how does it compare in your business? Good question. All right. Um, I am definitely back end heavy. Cool. Gotcha. That makes sense. Front end acquisition. Um, when I'm on my numbers, uh, we're making a little bit of money on front end. When yeah. I've lacked on my numbers or forgot to carry one, I have panic attack because I've lost $20,000 acquiring people right so yeah you make that up in the back end and the, i think that's kind of a cool thing because then if you're dependent on the next 90 120 days with those people you gotta treat them well you're yeah, right. you yeah. Get churn and burn because churn and burn lasts for two weeks where you you know you hit them with 14 different supplements and two of them are kind of shady and they're out you, you don't generate as much as you're going to need to make that model work so yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. Dude, you know what's funny? You make everything sound so simple, but it's like a lot more complex. Like as far as like how you move people through your different lists, like maybe it seems simple yeah. and logical to you, but we have people come to us all the time be like, how do I send an email? Yeah, like, but you're right. Do it's so six, right? So I've done the wrong way. We've done multiple products. I was involved in the Venus Index and Adonis Index and so many other products where, nice. you know, we've had great success and some massive mistakes. So... I feel that as long as you're trying to do the right thing, mm -hmm. even if it doesn't turn out to be the right thing at all, as long as you consider and go like, I, dude, I was trying. I honestly, I honestly thought that was the right thing to do. Yeah. Then 
you tend to stay fairly even keel with the wind and, and go where you need to go. It's yeah. when you're not trying to do the right thing and it's being like, this is going to be massive. Like as long as we don't get caught or as long as it doesn't piss too many people <laughs> off. When you start thinking that way, it catches up to you quick. So as long as yeah. you're trying to do the right thing, I think it also keeps you engaged in your business, right? So totally. yeah, that's true. Yeah, if you start deviating from trying to do the right thing, you end up being the guy who's like, my goal is to sell my business. Because you yeah. don't love it anymore, right? And it's, mm -hmm. and I, I hear people often um, I speak down against the idea of a business being a profit center, not an empire. And this is not an empire. This is my basement, right? I'm not yeah. building an empire. It's a profit center. It's to allow me to work until three, do an interview with you guys, and then go and see what's going on upstairs, right? Yeah. So yeah. that, when you are working, you really have to be invested in what you're doing. And to totally. do that, at least for me, it's got to be simple and sort of based on some pretty good guidelines and then you'll be all right. Awesome. Yeah. That's cool, man. So you guys, you label yourself as like a publisher. Do you yeah. mostly just publish your own books or do you have other people that you bring in with new ideas and you publish them for? I've them? tried other people. Um, you'd be surprised when you've got someone coming in and you're like, look, I'm going to do the marketing. I'm going to do the advertising. I'm going to help you design a back end. I need you to write emails. I'm literally going to tell you how they need to go. Yeah. Um, I'll help you design the book. I'll help you do the cover. I'll edit the book for you. We'll get this going. It'll be awesome. And your typical response is like, awesome. I want 80%. You're like, what? what? No, no, no. I'm going to do, do everything for you here so that, you know, you're going to get this awesome passive income flow. Yeah. Right? It could potentially generate you more wealth than you could possibly imagine just from, you know, six months of hard work. Uh, I'm just asking you to write the book. Then I'm going to help you edit. And then I'm going to walk you through this process so you're comfortable with everything we do. I'm thinking maybe we flip those numbers and then yeah. have no interest. And the, and I consider myself an author so I can speak from the heart when I say this, the ego in authors is pretty high. Right. Um, so someone who's willing to put their words down on paper, think their words are pretty special. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's hard to do. I've actually been thinking of, I know a couple of people who are, you know, whether they're, they're profs at Mac or McMaster, places like that, who have gone traditional publishing you know, and let them do the whole thing for them. I kind of want to go back to them a couple years later. Like, all right, so now that you've made 15 grand Canadian in that venture, why don't we talk, right? Yeah, yeah right. Same idea. But how would you like to actually have people email in questions about your work? And if you're a prof, you love talking about your own work, right? Like you've done yeah. And then you get to actually respond to them. And the cool thing is you build up that relationship. They may actually buy more stuff from you, whether it's coaching or more books or a subscription newsletter, just something. But uh, it's, you kind of got to wait for people to fail on that. No, I'm going to sign with some big massive publishing company and I'll make millions and realize that half the time you're just giving half that advance back, right? So Yeah, crazy. wow. Um, your mic got a little quiet there for a second. I'm not sure what's going on. Me or you? You. Oh, shoot. Did you miss all of that? No, no, no. We heard no, it. No, it, no, was we just, it. it was just a little <laughs> bit quieter. Um, yeah. Are the setting, are on the Zoom setting, sometimes they select the wrong mic uh, in the bottom left corner this is how professional we are guys technical uh no it's good it's good I, you yeah. know what i probably just started mumbling to be perfectly honest no 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 I, it, it it wasn't you it was something but it's good now we're back on the team beauty all right we love technical issues here we strive on <laughs> they're them. the best right yeah, yeah. so i to publish other people at one point because i do feel um not really plug and play but i feel i could lead a young author or just a new author through mm. quickly yeah but i think understanding that if I'm incurring a lot of that upfront expenses, that maybe, you know, you're not making 95% of the money off the book. Yeah. Yeah. Well, who, I know, a guy. Thought... I know a guy, if you want someone <laughs> yeah. who would actually, he would actually fit the bill perfectly. Yeah. And he would, and he would take that deal. Nice. Who is it? I can't tell you it's a secret. <laughs> Games like, I get a cut. So I got no, cut. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I don't get a cut. It would be, it would be uh, my personal trainer, hope... George, George, genius, George. Genius George, it's a good name. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I hope it's Dustin. Yeah. <laughs> God, I love Dustin. He needs his own podcast. He loves to talk. He does yeah, love to talk. Be It'd be like four hour long episodes, though. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, let me get to, yeah. <laughs> anyway, what were you saying, Tyler? <laughs> I was going to say, going back along the business model, who do you yeah. think is an ideal candidate to create a publishing business for themselves? Because I imagine right. anyone who's a coach, a consultant. Yeah, any, anybody who's passionate enough about their work that they 
are okay being debated by someone who just bought your book, read a third of it while sitting on in the bathroom and is already coming at you with questions. If you're not the type of person being like, holy crap, screw you for even questioning my authority, but be like, oh no, I totally, I get why you might think that, right? And I know why a couple of people said that, but this is why I actually think this doesn't apply in this case. If you're able to take that sort of criticism and turn it not into criticism, but just a friendly conversation between people, you're set up for its industry. If you're the type of person who, whatever you write down, you've actually you know, carved into concrete and it's unquestionable. And if anybody questions you, they can just go to hell. You're gonna have a hard time in this industry because mm. they have access to you, right? You, you can't be an online author and not answer emails and tweets and everything. And some of those emails and tweets are gonna be downright rude, right? They're gonna, yeah. it's gonna be some- People really, are ruthless. Yeah, she had a horrible day at work, then her commute home sucked. She got home and you know her husband's gone out for dinner and she's just pissed that she wasn't invited and then your email shows up and she's like, oh, screw this guy, I'm gonna get him, right? <laughs> and you just have to accept that that's where some people's mindsets are sometimes. And you know, you get those emails being like, you're the best and you totally changed my life. You have to expect the other ones, which is like, you stole money from my account. I don't even know how your business got my credit card when I entered it into getting your book. That you know, and you're, <laughs> you're, you're going with you. There's no way for me to. Uh, right? Cust- you gotta answer them. So if you've got that personality where you're like, ah, yeah, I'm gonna engage with you, right? Because I bet you I can mm-hmm. turn you around here, and I bet you I can at least get you to see my point of view on it. Yeah. Then you're set up for this kind of publishing industry. If you're not, then maybe you're more of a churn and burn buy my program, do my program. If you change my program, you're not getting your money back. Do it exactly the way I said I did it or you're not getting results done. Don't email me unless it's Tuesdays between three and four. Right, yeah. you have to more of that approach. But from a real publishing point of view, if you want people to think, I may read another one of his books one day, you gotta be able to engage them, even engage them from where they're at and accept that sometimes where they're at might not be a good place. Hmm. Do you answer all your own emails or do you have a customer service team? So you met Liz, so Liz has banned me from answering all my own emails, but I do- Has she? Oh yeah, <laughs> Liz, Liz, Liz holds the, the authority. No, so what I do is my customer service people send me, oh, let's man. say we get 30 emails in a day, and 10 of them are like directly science related to, related to a book I wrote. Those come to me. Gotcha. And then let's say there's some left that are some people that are really happy. She selects us up all, they go to me. And let's say there's four or five people that are really pissed off about something. I get a couple of those sent to me too, because ignoring the haters is, again, is this way of creating this little bubble of you being brilliant and everything you say is right. So you need to be challenged because sometimes they're right. Right. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're like, you've got this completely backwards and you have to go, I really doubt it, but I'll look. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it's just like, uh, I disagree. Sometimes it's a, uh, huh? Yeah. I mean, look at that. And other times like, this is the whole new book. This is amazing. Mm, Thank you for wow. bringing this Dude, down. I love that. I love how you turn you can, that around to create you something probably new. probably get a That's lot amazing. of ideas from that. Yeah. You get great ideas from people. And sometimes they're really out there and uh, you read the email and then you're like, oh, okay, that was nuts. And then you'd be laying in bed and like, wait, well, that does make sense, right? And then you can, you can follow it up. And some, the way I, I like mm. to do it is you follow it up, you do the research, you start writing. And then it could either become a quick tweet Maybe it's a bit longer, it's a blog post. Maybe a bit longer, it's a newsletter. Or like, crap, this might be a book, right? And you just start mm-hmm. writing and see when you stop writing, it's like, I got no more to add to this. Kind of lets you know what kind of content you have, but you always have content, right? So the, the haters are the good ones for that kind of thing. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, interesting. That like goes against everything that I learned in e-commerce. Just like, please. Yeah, please. but you know, it's different when you're engaging. <laughs> I, with yeah. Yeah, the emails are maybe if you care about the product game, yeah. dude. Well, no, I, like I cared about those flashlights. Yeah, yeah. When they're just ripping on the ad copy, you're like, I don't, don't tell you, man. Like it's, I, it needs to be that way in order to sell books. It's actually that's the reason you bought the book. Like I don't want to be. Yeah. Mean. And then yeah. sometimes you'll have two. This is my favorite one. One guy was mad about the upsell flow because all that information should have been in the book. Right, so it should each up each should have been bigger with that extra info in it. Yeah. The very next email was someone pissed off. Each up each was too big, and it should have been divided into multiple books. So they didn't want to read the part about um, fasting and women, and they didn't want to read the part about fasting and workouts because they didn't need my info on that. So I'm like, I, you can't always win, right? You're gonna get people who are just <laughs> can't you just skip that stuff. shit? Like, yeah. Why wow. didn't you personalize everything for me, right? But 
every once in a while you get some stuff that's good dude that's, yeah, no doubt. that's pretty funny though people are hilarious man i oh yeah just oh, yeah. some of the facebook comments that we see i'm just like really that's where your mind's at like right now yeah. i'm i'm running an ad and it's got uh it's using some sort of like chick-fil-a like fries or something on it you know it's it's not even like the main ad it's just in there somewhere and people are just like hating on it for uh the like black life matters movement and i have no idea what the hell's going on but the level of hate on this ad is just really? insane yeah i was like there's some fucking fries bro calm down <laughs> yeah anyway so i had to stop running that ad because it was just yeah it's just really? causing so way too much you still don't know what it was. It was something set people off and they ganged up on it, right? I don't know exactly what's going on, but I think black uh, they supported Black Lives Matters movement or something, and America hates that. It's took I, one stand on anything. Yeah, you, you know, it's, it's hard. I don't you know. know. To have an opinion on anything is, is a very difficult thing right now because oh, yeah. it politicizes you, and it, it's, dif it's difficult. So you, you do always have to think about how you're wording things whether it's a tweet whether it's an email yeah. um, even like yeah even just us talking about it like i can see you're seeing like okay what can i say yeah. even me i'm like what can i say i think the problem is though is like nobody's open to having real discussions about it it's more just like this is my no, opinion no, on there, that there's, fuck there's you debates there's never discussions and discussions and discourse is how we move forward in science yeah but yeah. you know yeah. apart all the political stuff even let's just go exercise science, right? There's camps and they don't discuss and debate and have discourse. They just be like, you know, screw you. You only need to do one set of an exercise and somebody else like, you need to do 40 and blocking you on Twitter, right? Yeah. This, this discourse is what you need to move things forward and to get new ideas. But we really, we silo, we like to, um, we collect people who agree with us and then mm -hmm. Facebook helps us and Twitter helps us find people who just agree with us. Yeah. And yeah. You never get to see alternate uh, views, which then really stifles any form of Dude, that's so true. Yeah. Man, it really does. It oh, will serve you content you want to see. Who are just like you, have the same opinions, right? So then it's really hard to find counter opinions. And if yeah. a counter opinion falls in your feed, it's shocking, right? Because it's just like, whoa, what? Everybody else is agreed, and there's this weird post, and I'm just going to not follow that person. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we have, we all have some sort of internet blindness. Uh, regardless if it's like Facebook, Instagram, even um, I feel like Spotify. I feel like before Spotify, my my music uh, palette was way more diverse. Like there was so much different songs that I listened to, so yeah. many different artists. And now it just keeps feeding me the same shit over and over again to the point where I'm like, this isn't interesting. I've heard this song 12 million times. Do you remember like high school when you would get in a buddy's car? Yeah. And, they'd and you're like, what? Who is that? Yeah. And you've never heard of and you go home and you buy everything. That's gone, right? Like yeah. It's, yeah. It's either serious radio and it's the same song every 15 minutes or it's, you know, everybody kind of listens to the same stuff, but that creativity that you get from organic creativity, but expression from, I've never heard this song before. It's kind of cool. It's nothing like what I've been listening to, but I'd, I'd like to sort of sample it a bit more. Yeah. We need more of that. Yeah, for sure. But I feel like that change rewires your brain on some level. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I miss Almost those times. Right? gets kind of boring, right? So if yeah. everybody's always agreeing with you, then what do, what, do you, what are you searching for? What are you reading about? That kind of thing. Yeah. So, I, I can assure you my like, wife doesn't agree with me on anything. So. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get challenged every day. Yeah. I I'm, I'm, I'm get to explain why I'm wrong a lot. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. one time that I'm right, I'm like, I'm drinking this in. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, give I, it yeah, to yeah. me. Give it to Actually, me. Actually, I write down the date so I can always bring it back up and, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same way with business too, right? Like whether it's Liz or some of the other business partners, right? Yeah. If you don't have healthy debate in your company, you're yeah. again, you're just you're not trying anything new, right? And you have to yeah. accept sometimes your idea might be wrong. Now you're allowed to say, I don't care if it's wrong, I want to try it. Like I want to see. And then the great thing about internet and split testing is three days later, you get to apologize to the team. Like, okay, well that got zero sales. So I was actually wrong. You guys are right. And we won't do that again. Right. But yeah. um, you need to do it sometimes, but it's good to have that debate and it's good to let them have the uh, told you so. Yeah. Numbers don't lie though. You got to test it. Got to test everything. Yeah. Yeah. One thing uh, I think we may have overshot uh, that I didn't think about until now 
as far as like actually selling your book, do you just run Facebook and Instagram ads or how do you go about it? Uh, Facebook and uh, I still do a fair amount of affiliate traffic. It's kind of died off. Oh, I keep closing my eyes as I think. Um, affiliate traffic <laughs> died off a bit. I feel that the affiliate market currently is very heavy supplement, right? Um, mm. It'll probably, but it always does this, right? Since yeah. 2006, yeah. something yeah. picks up and then people come back just wanting to sell a book. And yeah. so it'll, it'll come back. But right now it's Facebook and it's uh, free plus shipping mostly right now. We're trying to nice. yeah. Do you think the supplement because of rebills? No, I think it's the, the really high front end dollar. I don't think people want to wait for the money. Ah, so, gotcha. you know, if you can get people to buy three bottles of a supplement, then your upsells three more bottles and your one more up bottle for yeah. half. That's, you know, walking it's like out. like a $200 payout sometimes. Yeah, right. Yeah. Or, or, hey, you know what? You can do eat, stop, eat and make a tenth of that um maybe have it have your customers that you can email more often um and then you'll get some more money <laughs> later on that's a hard pitch right or you're like or just mail the supplement yeah. so yeah I mean, we're trying i do have a fasting tea um that i really like that we're, we're trying in the flow but i really want it to not be the front end i want to build up that relationship with them be like i again design this for me um, the way I want it and the only way I can afford to make it, to take it for myself is to make enough to sell to you guys so I can have some too, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's basically how I pitch it. Yeah. You know that it's designed mostly for me but also for them kind of thing. But I mean, that's that's smart though. It adds a level of trust to everything. Like Dave Asprey with Bulletproof, right? I feel like for a while there I was jumping on his bang when I bought everything that he did just because, yeah. Yeah. He did it, right? yeah. He wasn't being like, Gabe, this is the best thing for you. He's yeah. like, hey, this is the best thing I've used for me. Yeah. You should try it. It's that yeah. sort of that new level of, well, like, he likes it. Yeah. And I mean, the, the products you delivered were, were pretty on point for what you wanted. Yeah, totally. Yeah. totally. Yeah. He, stayed, um, he stayed fairly on point, too, in terms of who he is, right? Like, yeah. He, he, he's a bit, um, not crazy, eccentric, really smart. Yeah. Eccentric yeah. Well, yeah. But he never claimed to be otherwise. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, I think that Dave's the kind of guy that if you were if you were to meet Dave in person, he would be Dave. Yeah. Which is my my favorite thing about the online world is when you meet people and they're the same person that they are online. Rarely happens. Man. Rarely, yeah. yeah. Either the super nice guy online, they're just not nice in person, or they're a super Reverse. hard ass online and they're super nice in person, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I you think know, it's funny. I, I have one. Go ahead. Sorry. I think it wears you down pretending to be someone you're not online. I, I think yeah, it, agreed. It's not congruent. Exactly. I have a, I have one mentor who helped me before I even got online. Like I was uh, working at an engineering firm at the time and he would, he would just take his time and teach me. And he's really big now. Everyone's heard of him at the time. I didn't pay him anything. He would just take me out for lunch and dinner and just teach me shit. Like I really owe a lot to him. But when you see him online, he's such a dick. Yeah. And I almost don't like him online, but you meet him in person. He's like the nicest guy in the world. And like, I know everything he used to do for me. Again, I didn't pay him. There was no financial benefit from him. He used to review my copy for me when I first wow. started. Like he did so much uh, for free when he charged. Right when he's saying something well, important. Yeah. It's just uh, his computer can't handle it when he's actually like. <laughs> Tragic <laughs> moment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but but regardless, he's such a dick, and I, I always think I'm like, dude, like maybe you do that for the brand. I don't know what it is, but like it's just I wouldn't even know you if I met you today, or like yeah. if I met you during a video, I wouldn't know who you really are. But I agree, I think it is a an energy drain to be something you're not. Yeah, and you know, there's some people who are misunderstood that way too. I find that um, there is a bluntness to the European way of talking and discussing things, especially when English might be a second language that comes across. Um, asshole-ish and it's just them being hey, what are the right words to use here yeah and then throwing it um, out there. maybe not being quite as as um worried to step on toes as maybe we are so every once in a while you get that where the difference in you know when you can see someone as opposed to just you're reading the words when you can see what their face mm -hmm. facial expressions look like when they're saying them it changes stuff it's like when you get a text with someone and you're like yeah Oh my god, you asshole! And you're like, hey, look what look what they Gabe said. And Gabe's like, like a, he just said can't make dinner. But you look at how he said it. Right? And you're like, <laughs> the sex man. You can't, yeah. You can't how he said it, right? So I think that comes. Yeah. It is uh, to your point when they're really purposely different online and on person. 
I think the problem there is eventually you slip up and your core audience catches it. And yeah. Then they run, like, on. I find, I, I find the energy level a big thing for a lot of people is like, they're just so hyped up. Like this is the most exciting thing ever. And then you meet them and they're just so chill. Yeah. Um, like that, that gets draining. Like you literally have to turn on a face just yeah. to talk to your phone or the camera or whatever. You yeah, know? I can't do that. It's hard. I have to, to get the bar really low. People meet <laughs> person. They're like, he's actually really energetic, right? So. Nice. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just who I am online. This is yeah. me. Um, I was you know who say, I, sounds like the way Gabe used to date women. Yeah, yeah. I set the bar real low. Yeah. No, no, no. I set the bar really low for myself. So when I do something nice, it's just like, oh my god. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know who's like that is uh, the that Tom guy, Tom Billion from uh, Quest. I don't know if I said his name right. Oh, by you, you or by you or something? Yeah, that guy, man. Like, I like he's got great right. content. Love his podcast. Love everything about him, man. But he just like. He tries to swear a lot and act like super aggressive and tough. And I'm like, I'm not buying it, bro. Like, no, yeah, I don't know. I find um, the swearing is, is a super interesting phenomenon. You can look back at in our industry about, you know, somewhere around 2015, people were like, I'm just going to drop F bombs all over my book, like in the book constantly because it's tough. Right. Or yeah. short, I'm like, I'm no nonsense or that I'm um, like, like just cutting right to the facts. And it was so weird because it may work in conversation the right way. It does not work in mm -hmm. um, an act. It may even work in email, but in a book, it's jarring. Mm -hmm. And um, I talk to my kids a lot about this. I'm like, when yeah. you look at comedians, right? Whether it's Chappelle or someone else, like this is their art and their craft. And they time the swear words perfectly yeah. for for the right effect. And they're doing it to, to elicit a response. They're not just dropping it in because they can't think of a better word. And I really feel right now that mm -hmm. um, people swear a lot because they don't actually have a large enough vocabulary. So yeah. if something's better than great, it's just fucking great. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So, but in, in weird books, and I've noticed it now that trend is gone and it's not, you're not getting profanity laced emails or, or newsletters anymore, but there was this really weird period of time it was just everywhere mm -hmm. i think like hearing it i'm cool with but i think reading it it's it's different it has a different vibe it would be weird yeah, yeah definitely it, it almost feels less professional too um and, and less educated i feel too I yeah well you guys are gonna let me get away with occasional dropping a light in, in the podcast right yeah. so I'll, I'll be like it was kind of cool yeah but if i were to take all those likes and stick them just randomly through sentences in my book you'd be this is garbage. Oh, right? dude. So yeah. you get away with something. An idiot. Yeah, exactly. Orally that you, you just can't do it written. Even when I'm okay. like recording like educational videos and I say like and um, I'm like, oh dude, I sound retarded. Sorry, I, mean, I can't yeah. even say retarded. I sound stupid. Like yeah. straight up you, stupid. Yuri, Yuri Okame. I can't uh, Yuri, I'm so sorry about your last name. Anyway, I did an interview with him and I was just excited about what we were talking about. And it was yeah. a bit off the top. And I thought it was this great interview. And then his assistant sent me the podcast and just like every second or third word. And I was so embarrassed. I almost wanted to like write him and apologize. Yeah. And it's just, you get going and you're, you're speaking fast from your mind to wow. work. But like, yeah. like ums. Yep. Oh, it's horrible. For that day, I, I'm not doing this anymore. And I listen, I can hear it on radio stations. And when the, the hosts start dropping likes, it just, tingles the back of my head. <laughs> so you said something interesting there what are you really excited about right now oh i good question i just i dig into research and then i get on crazy tangents and then i just follow them until either i can dovetail them into something other people might care about or i get rid of them but that that chase that hunt is, is what gets me going so right now i'm 50 papers deep in the effect of ambient temperature on humans, right? Rather, it, it's actually very similar to the effect of exercise in some cases. There's a good case to be made that the thermal neutral zone we live in, what we consider comfortable because of the amount of clothes we typically wear in our houses, we keep our houses at around 20. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but yeah. 20, where nude, you'd be comfortable at like 26, right? So that discrepancy, that staying in a climate that your normal body would consider to be cold 
uh, could be having profound effects on our physiology and our metabolism. So like, this is wicked. It's not something you have to eat. It's not fasting, Interesting. but it's, it dovetails into it, right? Because everybody lives in a house with certain temperatures. The, you can trace the increase in diabetes and obesity and be like, I wonder if it's going up like this, what's the prevalence of air conditioning in the States? You're like, oh, it's like almost exactly the same. Um, and it wow. just really, that kind of stuff gets me going. Cause then I can just read about it forever until I get to the point where I'm like, oh, you know, here's a couple spots where it just doesn't make sense. And maybe I'm just yeah. chasing it. Or it's to the point where it's like, this could be a really cool book that I think people would be interested in and the timing might be right. That kind of thing. See, yeah. I always like thought that when you had a colder environment, your body had to work harder and it would like you burn more calories or some shit. Like I know that's an old school. No, it's, it's actually really accurate. The problem is, is that that's a very acute change. So if you think my body when cold, increased metabolism is a cute way to keep me warm. It's using my internal yep. body to warm me up. Could the long-term effect of that be your body recognizing, man, Brad's metabolism is pretty high. It's cold in here. We can fix this by laying down some fat. And if he gets a bit more insulation, then his metabolism wouldn't have to be so high and we can get back to normal. That's right? so, valid. Yeah, I, a lot of the research I do is the, what's the acute effect, what's the chronic effect, right? So um, you think during the heat, your, you know, your metabolic rate actually goes down a bit, you get less hungry, but then you think, man, okay, well, heat stress is actually a, a big risk. We've had NFL players mm -hmm. die during two days who are overweight and training. What if the chronic adaptation to high heat would be changing the surface area to mass ratio so that you can dissipate heat better, which would mean over the course of being in a higher environment, you slowly lose body fat via obviously eating less. That doesn't change, yeah. but with less drive to eat. No one wants to eat when it's 40 degrees. Out. No, it's, we know that's no. the case. You want to drink. Yeah. yeah. When it's cold out, you want to eat, right? So maybe it's a combination of, the hormone profile plus the temperature and your body just trying to keep you alive in these conditions that drive it. And maybe if we live our entire lives thermal neutral here into my thermal neutral car, in my thermal neutral office, and I never experienced hot or cold other than running to my car and back while the air conditioning is not on, you lose that ability to adapt. Right. And I, I always think it's Sign me up for the next book. Yeah. yeah it's fun, right? You think of this, this is fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> Like if you have a young kid and they eat a big meal, they are like a sweaty mess. Yeah. And I can remember being like that when I was a teenager and now I don't, I can eat everything. And like, I've lost that, maybe that ability. Right. Yeah. And you use, if, if when you eat and those calories are, are released and you only use 30% of them to fuel your body and the other 70% is used for heat. And mm. people are like, yeah, that, that's wasted energy. I'm like, well, if 70% of it's going towards heat, maybe that's the entire purpose. Like maybe that's a real reason we eat is to mm. like our body temperature. Like I, I'm going to switch to Fahrenheit now because all of being Canadian, we use Celsius. very degrees. But yeah. if your kid's got a 98.5 degree temperature, they're fine. If they have a hundred degree temperature, they have a fever. It's that tight. Wow. Right? Yeah. The body's doing a lot of work to regulate that. So it's worth looking into, you know, is this, insulation is it just stored calories that i eat too much or did i eat too much for a reason because i needed to be warm um gotcha. a lot of the heat is in your gi tract it's in your stomach the uh, thermic effect of food right you hear about that all the time yeah so mm -hmm. it makes sense you'd want to insulate right about here right if, if you're constantly being exposed to cold um, yeah yeah so that's that's the kind of thing gets me going then i could literally we could be on the phone for four hours talking about this because how deep yeah. i get about it um yeah and then it just leads me to one spot to another. It's far more exciting than the business side. The business side is interesting. I really like seeing the money come in. I really yeah. enjoy the money, but I'll admit a large part of it is because those people bought, read, and liked the book. So it was a bit of ego, but it's also a bit of, I really like the sharing. I like the fact someone yeah. else read it. it it's like, rewarding. Yeah, it's, that's reward, exactly. Yeah. And mm. the, the money is rewarding enough that if I have a good idea, I'm not giving away free. But at the same time, I've learned that, you know, when you give people free advice, they don't ever take it. When they pay a little bit of money for it, there's value. Yeah, That's true. Yeah, so I, I do enjoy making money, but I really enjoy the way I make it, which is by sharing ideas. That's cool. Man.
Damn. I, yeah. I, like, it, I feel like we could talk about this shit forever. This, We're I'm, both going through the thermometer. I have the thermostat up. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't got, I don't have AC in my place, so I'm good, man. I'm a, there you go. I'm, yeah. in a, I'm in a sweat box right now. I'm just yeah, naturally a sweat box. Open the Florida windows right now to see what's going on. Yeah, no, that's Tyler. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm in a cool 20 degrees here in oh, Vancouver. Yeah. <laughs> Cool, man. Well, I, man, like we've been doing this for an hour. Uh, yeah, dude, this was awesome. Thank you. I think there's a lot of insights. Like, yeah. And dude, I, I think I really, really, go ahead. When it comes to business stuff, what people are actually interested in what they're not, right? Especially since I don't have yeah. a special system that's going to guide myself in a certain way and have a good team. Yeah. No, I think there's a lot of good philosophies, man. And I think it opened, uh, it'll help people realize like, because a lot of people do have passions that they love and yeah. they don't just don't know how to make money off that. Yeah, but now yeah. this kind of gives them some insights what they can do to build that up and create something amazing. So that's badass. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, do you like when people reach out to you? Do you not like, uh, we're fine either way. Oh no. Reaching out is cool. Okay. What's I mean, the best way to do so? Okay. So if you have something cute and short and witty Twitter, I love Twitter. I love people yeah. give me funny in 144 characters. Or nice. Yeah. Um, anything you know, longer than that, just hit me up on uh, email for attitude.com. Uh, blog is bradpelon.com. Instagram is at bradpelon.com. It's a pretty good trend here. Yeah. Yeah, noticing. One L and Pelon, P I L O N. Basically, Pelon, Mus Pelon Musk over here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love nice. it, bro. All right. Thank you for everyone who listened today. For everyone watching, please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube. And for everyone listening, please give us a five star review on iTunes, Spotify, or Stitcher. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, dude, thank you.